live vanaf ID in Amsterdam. ID is een onderdeel van de E-Week. Dus een heel week van, uh, uh, van evenementen in Amsterdam die over uh, ja, van alles gaan. Veel innovatie, marketing, technologie, hackathons, noem het allemaal maar op. Allerlei plekken in de stad. Um, ik spreek de hele dag hier met, uh, met gasten over hun favoriete onderwerpen. Uh, hi, welkom. Uh, who are you and what do you do? Uh, thanks very much. My name is Kaiser Guo. I am the host and, and founder and producer of the Seneca podcast on Sub China. Yeah. It's a uh, current affairs show about China. Yeah. Uh, you are um, uh, one of the speakers uh, uh, today. Yes, I am. So what is the point you want to get across to the, the audience today? Well, I want to talk about the, the many, many years that I've had uh, you know, as a part of the Chinese internet. Uh, much of my, my work there, either as a reporter or working in communications for large internet companies, has been communicating with Western audiences about the internet in China. And along the way, I've discovered that there are many profound misunderstandings, misperceptions about the internet that I want to try to correct. Yeah. Can you give me an example? What sure. is a misunderstanding? Uh, I mean, for, for one thing, I think, you know, there's these, these wild pendular swings between this idea that China is somehow incapable of technology innovation and on the other hand these sort of breathless you know exaggerated claims about uh, China's innovative prowess i think that the, the truth is of course somewhere in between and it's 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 good to try to sort these things through um, also about internet censorship about the nature of internet censorship about uh, what it it how it actually operates what its actual purpose is whether it has been a meaningful impediment to competition from foreign countries and when you do your uh, podcast or your show what is, what is your target audience is do you do you help companies uh, informing about the subject or is it is it is it for me as a general audience it's it's for you as a general audience it's for people who have taken a, a fairly serious interest in china uh, not just for you know the, the complete neophyte it's not somebody who's coming to china for the first time but uh, most of our audience uh, consists probably of academics of journalists of media people of people who work in think tanks of people who work in defense or in intelligence who are, are professional china watchers of some kind or another yeah. or sort of amateur observers of china what what can uh, say what can other audiences for example the dutch audience uh, uh, learn from uh, uh, um, from internet in china at the moment from what's happening there i always i read a lot about wechat for example and how it's right. going to change uh, so, sort of that's the sort of new internet in 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 China, yeah, I, 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 let's let's start with WeChat. I think that's it's an excellent example. I think that there are already a lot of companies in Silicon Valley and elsewhere uh, who are looking at WeChat and, and and finding some of their best practices and trying to incorporate them into the products that they produce. Uh, I think that there is a danger, though, in in not understanding uh, what the circumstances were that produced the success of WeChat in China. Uh, how China is a very very different market. It has a very different topography than any other internet market in the world. Some of the very things that I think made WeChat a success in China would actually hamper or cripple it in, in trying to expand into other markets. Yes, so, 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 so can you elaborate on that? Oh yeah, I mean for example, uh, you know, WeChat is sort of a Swiss army knife of a product. It's, it's got a whole lot of, of, of uh, you know, densely packed products within that. Uh, it, it, it represents sort of an entire ecosystem uh, that wouldn't be possible, for example, in a place where the mapping software is completely dominated by another player, where the payments systems are dominated by another player. Uh, it, it has operated in an environment where it was it has been able to be sort of everything to everyone. Yeah. Uh, very often, uh, people from a technology perspective forget the culture uh, that's perspective right. of, uh, of things as well. So, so, so. Um, how different is, say, the, 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 the Chinese culture, for example, to the, the, the American culture? Well, it's quite different, and um, part of that has to do with the, the fact that the, the Chinese internet itself, uh, it came up as, as a public sphere, the first real public sphere, meaningful public sphere in, in Chinese life. I mean, I'm talking you know, over the entire long span of China's history. There's never been sort of a forum, a, a, a public square where people could gather and exchange ideas. So the internet was sort of saddled with this additional role. Uh, it, it became, you know, the the uh, the soapbox for many public intellectuals. It's always had in it an intrinsic property of, of uh, political participation and responsibility in it that's absent in a lot of other internets in other parts of the world. Yeah. 
for a lot of the uh, uh, earlier internet uh, adopters, and I assume you were uh, one of them as well, the internet in the, in the beginning had, of course, the, the, the promise of democratization of, of, of the world. Uh, this is uh, how we can communicate with everyone and everywhere, etc. Um, um, in, in, what, um, in what way did it bring that or didn't bring it at all? Yeah, I think that um, we can't, uh, th those ideas were themselves um, very highly romantic, uh, and very idealistic, and I think that they, they kind of crashed on the shoals of reality. We imagined an internet that sort of floated free above the petty concerns of nation states and things like that, uh, that was somehow, that somehow belonged to the people. The reality, of course, was not, I mean, the, the reality was that the servers and the routers and, and the optical fiber that constitute the physical internet, these things sit on sovereign territory of countries, that they cross sovereign borders, yeah. and that governments would participate in, in, in these. And, uh, you know, we also have maybe had very cavalier ideas about how uh, the internet was going to be able to be this you know, massive transformative tool uh, that would bring us all together into a global conversation when in fact it is has actually made us maybe more fractured, more tribal, more contentious <laughs> than yeah. ever, uh, more isolated. In, yeah. uh, but China is, uh, is, is, is very different in a lot of ways. Uh, for one thing, uh, it, it, it sort of embraced a, 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 maybe a, a broader swath of, of uh, participants in, in a single internet. It wasn't as fractured. There was sort of one common conversation happening, at least for you know, really the first decade or so of the internet, uh, where people had a very conscious sense that they were participating in a kind of new polity, uh, where any meme or any, any, any phenomenon that would explode in one small corner of the internet would resonate across the entirety of it very, very quickly, so that everyone knew these same memes, these same phenomena, these same, they were having you know, these common conversations. It's very unlike the United States in that, in that regard. Yeah. When you, uh, of, of course, the, inf the, the internet has influenced us all, and especially maybe the, the, the mobile in combination um, Absolutely. Um, yeah. with internet. Do you see um, differences? Did, did, has, it, has it impacted uh, China in a different way than it, than, than it has done, uh, done America? Yeah, I think that um, you know the main impact is that because it had this, this phenomenal leapfrog effect, there were not precursor technologies to the internet that were comparable. Uh, you know, th this wasn't a place where people had citizens banned radio or where, where people were ham radio operators or this wasn't a place where you know there, there was any kind of um, a uh, you know tradition of, of publishing sort of underground samizdat or publishing uh, you know mimeographed sheets uh, zines and that yeah. sort of thing the internet was really the first and, and foremost for there uh, it, it, it rolled onto the scene in China very very differently than it did in, in other parts of the world yeah uh, um, you, you, the, your, your, your theme is myths about um, um, internet in, 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 in China. Uh, there are, of course, lots of people here. It's a, it's a business thing where people are, sure. are, are here for. Um, what myth or what, what things should you take in, into account if you think, well, I've got a good service or a good tool or whatever, and right. I want to try and, and set it up and make it a success in China? As uh, well? that, that's an excellent question. I think that um, one part of the talk that I plan to give this afternoon will look at, at that, look at some of the pitfalls. By well, they're quite well marked. We know sort of the map of the, of the minefield of, of, of you know, the Chinese business environment. Uh, companies that come into China sort of know what mistakes they shouldn't be making. But in spite of that, and we can look at some companies that have really are guilty of making none of those mistakes. They've partnered with a good, strong local Chinese partner. They've really understood the regulatory environment well. They've understood the market well. They've, they've empowered their local teams. They've done everything by the book and still they have failed. I think that what, what people really need to understand is the, the incredible ferocity of the competitive environment in China. Uh, that these people are often uh, they're very deep pocketed, they're very, very well funded, they're highly seasoned, very, very scrappy entrepreneurs, and often they are not ethically very restrained. Mm -hmm. uh, the level of competition is unlike anywhere you'll ever ever see in the world. Yeah, really? Yeah. yeah. So, um, think really good when you start. <laughs> <laughs> think very well, and, 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 you know, consider just not doing it. It's, it's, yeah. not, it's not for the, the faint of heart. Well, and I think that the, what, that's why I said culture. I think culture is such an important thing of, and a difficult thing as well. Um, it's, it's even for 
uh, for, I see for American companies when they think Europe and they think Europe is one thing. Europe is one sure. as, as well as one market. Uh, but, but of course, of course, of course it's not. Is, is, is not. So culture is such a um, well, well, difficult thing as well to, to, to grab, to understand, to do the right thing for us. Absolutely. Going to Germany is a difficult uh, Absolutely. Uh, thing yeah. even. So uh, I can and, imagine that. And yet American internet companies have done extraordinarily well in Europe. I mean, if you look at you know uh, Google's domination of every market, every yeah. search market in Europe except for the Czech Facebook. Republic. Uh, yeah, if so you look at Facebook, yeah. but that, that's simply not the case in countries like China. No. If you look at Korea, it's it's not the case. Yeah. It's uh, very different. Okay, really interesting. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you. And have a good talk later on today. Thank you very much. Jullie bedankt voor het kijken. Um, een stuk of twintig interviews nemen we vandaag op. Ze komen allemaal on demand beschikbaar, zoals je weet. Dus uh, kun je ze niet allemaal zien? Kijk dan later rustig nog een keertje terug. Tot zo direct.